So I had asked you to read the article Dude by Scott Kiesling. He's a linguistic anthropologist at University of Pittsburgh, and he's writing about these layered meanings around this one short little word, dude. So as Brandon said, who knew dude could be so complicated? So you knew, because you're linguistic anthropology students. Um, so what we're going to do today is I'm going to explain, I'm going to tie in this article to some of the things that we've talked about in terms of um, indexicality, multifunctionality, practice, right? These ongoing themes that we've talked about in linguistic anthropology that continue to have meaning. No matter what it is, what particular topic we're looking at, it's going to be something that's always there present. So let's start off um, by watching this short video uh, about Dude. And um, it's just a short little advertisement where that word is is featured a lot. And then we'll go into the material. And then we'll, uh, I don't know, I guess we'll hear from you in terms of what you found when you were doing your, your project for class. OK? Sound good? All right. Dude. What do you see in that video? Dude, it's the only word that's spoken. What do you see going on? Even though they're only having, they're only saying one word, they're having multiple conversations. It's just like how the tone they use or like the context. Tone, con OK, all right. What else? Uh, as far as indexicality, it's, they're like indexing this like casual relationship with the person. Like they're equalizing the relationship with that person. Right, casual relationship, making sure no, nothing is taken too seriously, right? What else, do anybody else have something that they see? I thought it was kind of obvious that they were all dudes. You know, it's guys talking to guys. Only, only guys in the commercial, right? I think Brandon has something to say. Yeah, I thought it was kind of showing the masculinity of the way use of it, because it's showing how it's only guys, and then at the end, Whenever he gets a beer and his friend gets a, I don't know what he was drinking, he's just like, dude, what are you doing? Isn't that interesting how what, what someone can drink even is, I don't know, just washed through with gender ideas. Yeah. yeah. I noticed that they used the idea of dude as a masculine concept, but they also used it to kind of promote their product only to a certain demographic. And it was interesting how they used the demographic and also used the, the idea of like a community of practice, which we talked about last class, and how like there's men that drink beer, like there's a certain type of men that play sports, drinks beer, and does you know these certain activities, and they kind of hit that right on the head. They, had, they hit all points of that, exactly yeah. right. All right, so you guys are all getting to the things that we need to talk about today. I'm going to just write a few things on the board. This is what we're going to talk about. So we're going to talk in terms of indexicality. Uh, masculinity. You know, I always wish I had nice handwriting, but I don't. Uh, and we're going to talk about dude equals what he's calling cool solidarity. All right. So in terms of indexicality, who can say what indexicality is? Who can define it? It's 
So when I think in indical indexicality, it's sort of like how what we say and how we say it can define like where we're from or what group we belong to. That's right. That's right. You could think of indexicality if you're like, wait a minute, when she says what does indexicality mean, oh, I can't remember what it means. How can you remember? What, where do you find an index? Uh, in the back of a book, and it's used to find key terms and what pages they appear in on that specific book. Okay, all right, exactly. So you have a book, you're like, oh, where do I find blah, blah, blah. You open up the back of the book, you look in the index, you find the Bs, you find, oh, there's blah, blah, blah. It says page 36, you turn to page 36, there's a full discussion of blah, blah, blah. Right, so this is an index. It refers, a word is referring to something. A word is referring to, uh, a particular place where that word is discussed. Um, so we can talk about indexicality in terms of referential, as in refer, right? It refers to something, so it's referential. So words can refer to particular things. It can refer to some material object, like this desk. Uh, it can refer to a, a moment in time, like here, now, yesterday, tomorrow. It can refer to a person, you, Andrew, Priscilla, me, uh, those people, right? So it can be something concrete, a particular time, a particular place, a particular thing. But you can also have non-referential. And this is kind of what Emily was getting at in terms of it can, like by using a particular word, you're showing that you're a membership, uh, you, you have membership in a group, or that you want to be part of that group, or that your identity is related in some way to that social group or social status. So it's non-referential in that it's not referring to something, you're using it almost instrumentally, you're using a word instrumentally to show that you are allied in some way with this particular social group or social status. So indexicality is important in terms of linguistic anthropology because we remember that language is not always just re referring to those things that exist out there in the world. It's not communicating ideas that are already there. It's not just conveying information that's already existing. It's creating meaning. It's creating identity. It's creating the social as we understand it in anthropology and in sociology. So indexicality is using language to refer and create meaning instead of just to convey information about things that are already existing out there in the world. And that is, you know, once you realize that, you start listening to how people talk. And when they say one thing, they're communicating more than just an idea about the material that they're talking about. They're communicating all these other things too, which is really fascinating. You can start to see like all these other layers of meaning in people's identity and what they're trying to express. So I don't know about you, but I think that's juicy and cool. So, all right. So in other words, words don't just, communicating, don't just communicate already existing information out there in the world. People use language to create identities for themselves, reaffirm identities that they already have, and to connect to other people on the basis of those identities. There's a famous uh, linguistic anthropologist, Alessandro Duranti, and he writes, Language becomes a tool through which our social and cultural world is constantly described, evaluated, and reproduced. So I'll just read, it, read this again. Think about this. Language becomes a tool through which our social and cultural world is constantly described, evaluated, and reproduced. So let's look into that in terms of indexicality and masculinity. These are the two main topics that emerge in this article for me as I read it. So let's go then, okay, we understand indexicality. Let's go to masculinity, all right? Once I was teaching a class and I just was casually talking about masculinity and, you know, I realized that it's maybe a bit of jargon, that everybody doesn't understand what we mean when we say masculinity. 
So can I hear from you what you think masculinity means? Think about, maybe just everybody take 30 seconds and write down a definition of what masculinity means. What does masculinity mean? All right, I think people are, some people are still writing, but I, I bet you have the idea in your head. Um, Danielle, can you share with us what you think masculinity means? Like the sense of being manly or being macho or being a dominant or like taking control over a situation. Okay, manly, dominant, taking control. Joe, what do you think? I, I took it as like, if you're referring to a guy being masculine, he's like a man's man, he's like a tough guy. Man's man, tough guy. Kelsey, what do you think? I think it's dependent, like its definition is dependent on the culture that you're in because there's different concepts of what is associated with male. Oh my gosh, you guys are all right, but you're talking about the social constructed nature of masculinity, exactly right. And you are talking about, in terms of dominant, uh, like all these words that you're using, like hard, blah, oh, I'm a man. Right? You're talking about how it's socially constructed, but you're getting at the thing that's important in anthropology, that masculinity is socially constructed. So if I had to define socially constructed, I would say that it means that its definition changes from place to place and over time. Right? So masculinity in Rome, you know, during all of that, I don't know, I'm trying to think of something witty to say and I just can't. <laughs> uh, masculinity for, uh, gladiator. thank you, gladiator, that's the word. Think of like masculinity for gladiators, that's one kind of masculinity. Or masculinity for Japanese men, masculinity for Indonesian elderly men, masculinity for teenage boys in the US, masculinity for white boys, masculinity for uh, Hispanic boys, Latino boys, uh, Asian kids, black kids, straight kids, gay kids, there's all different kinds of masculinity, right? But they're all socially constructed. They change from one place to another. They change from one era to another. We all learn these social roles in, where do we learn? How is this socially constructed? Where does it first take place? Who's gonna say, shout it out, just. No, the home. The home, parents, definitely. What were you gonna? I was going to say the home too, and like I was going to give the example of like boys are encouraged not to cry as much as, or is, I don't know if encouraged not to, it's just more acceptable for girls to cry than boys to cry, and that's enforced at an early age because crying is not masculine in our society. Right. In our society, that's seen as unacceptable for boys. What are other things that are, you know, ideal, that are socially constructed for, for boys? I know for my family, my brother's like that definition of a really macho man. And like when my nephew wears like pink or like he dresses up in girly things, he gets really like he forces those views of masculinity on him. Like he gets really defensive. Oh. So. Lucky he has you. <laughs> Elizabeth. Even the toys that are acceptable and like when you start kindergarten, they have like the little like playhouse and like the dishes and whatever set up for like the girls, but the boys are expected not to go near that like pretend kitchen area. They're supposed to be like over with the trucks or whatever. I don't even know what they did. That <laughs> they were gross when I was gun. little. Nerf guns, okay, there you go. Absolutely. I mean, from the moment that kids are born, they go through this socialization process where parents are trying to socialize them. I got a birth announcement from a friend, and he'd had a little boy, and uh, he sent a birth announcement that looked like a football card, or like a, right, you know what I'm talking about, football card, they still have those, right? Football card, and it had a picture of the baby, and it had, they live in Miami, and uh, they had photoshopped on the baby, like a Miami Dolphins outfit. You know, a helmet, <laughs> shoulder pads, on this little infant who's like, 
you know, he can barely open his eyes. His weight were like these stats. So socialization starts, ha starts really quickly, starts in the family, first of all. Then you learn it from your peers. You learn it from the media. You, you know, there's all these different agents of socialization. So masculinity is something that is learned in the family, and it's definitely socially constructed. Um, I'm going to make things easier for myself. So masculinity became the object of study as a result of uh, feminist studies. So field of social science and humanities research that looks at how women's roles in society are socially constructed um, and really problematize that. And then people start to say, well, hello, men's roles are also socially constructed. Let's have a look at that. So you have a whole fields of study around uh, masculine studies, feminist studies. So it really emerged from this particular um, attempt to address how socially constructed this really elemental part of someone's identity is. So it's, it's interesting. So in this, what, what you see happening, and this is discussed in the article, is this idea of the hegemonic masculinity. And by that I mean like this ideal type. Ideal type or ideal ma man that comes out of this pretty narrow definition of masculinity, pretty narrow understanding of definition of masculinity. And so hegemonic, if you're familiar with social science, you might have seen this word come up. It talks about, hegemonic is this understanding of, like, that, hmm, hegemonic helps us understand that this is the, normative definition, that there is a normative definition of masculinity, that people believe it, people accept it as real, and that when you have elements or instances of a different type of masculinity that counter that normative one, the, that ideal type, that it, it's hard for people to accept. It's hard for people to swallow. That like, what? You're not supposed to do that. You're acting wrong. So it becomes like the standard definition. And so people pay a real price. Men who don't conform to this ideal type, they may pay a very steep price for not conforming to this types of, you know, this hegemonic masculinity. They could be teased, they could be bullied. But certainly we have to be clear that there's all different types of masculinities. There's not just one different type, but there is this so-called ideal type. So that's important to recognize. Um, all right, so this all brings us to today's topic, right? Indexicality, masculinity, how does that, how's all of that involved in this short little word, dude, right? So let's look at dude in terms of indexicality and masculinity. Let's look at it. He says that dude indicates cool solidarity, and that's true, but let's, let's break this apart a little bit. So I want you to be thinking as we go through this, how does dude perform indexicality? Okay, so be thinking, how does dude perform indexicality? And this is not a, don't, you don't need to answer it right this second, but you, you will, it'll inform your questions. And how does the use of dude inform this idea of masculinity that we talk, we've been talking about? So, dude, he says, is an example of cool solidarity. And cool solidarity is, he breaks it up into sort of this hegemonic masculinity in terms, wait, so that's not what I want to say. He breaks it up into masculine so solidarity and heterosexuality. So masculine solidarity and heterosexuality, he says, are two key components of what he's calling this cool solidarity. So to be, in using this word dude, how 
are people, what are, what are they doing? How are they performing these two things, masculine solidarity and heterosexuality? Anybody? Whenever people are using the word dude, it's kind of indexing this relationship between them. And um, the author talked about it be being between camaraderie and intimacy. So it's like perpetuating this masculine I like idea that you can't like be too intimate with someone of the same sex because that invades on this like heterosexual image. Exactly, exactly. So there's the solidarity. So in a masculine relationship, and you see this in films, you see this in... I mean, in these commer that commercial even that we watched at the beginning, you see this emphasis on solidarity, right? You've got to be there for your dudes. You've got, you know, your friends. You have this camaraderie. But you can't be too close. Otherwise, you don't conform to this sort of hegemonic masculinity. And so dude indexes, and I think, Stephen, you used that word just exactly right. Dude indexes this sort of like, hey, we're friends, dude, but hey, we're not too close of friends, dude, right? It helps convey this idea. It indexes someone's sexuality. It indexes their idea of friendship and how guys are friends. Any, so and going back to that question that I asked, how do you see indexicality here? How do you see masculinity here in, in terms of cool solidarity? Does that question make sense? Not really? You want to reword it? Let me see. How do I reword it? Uh, OK, so what does cool solidarity mean in terms of indexicality? What, is it, how, what gets indexed? In, in this sort of dude and how he's describing it as cool solidarity. Oh, that still doesn't make sense because I know you guys know. You want to give it a shot, I'll Andrew? Give it a shot. Um, well, indexicality uses, is used to create and reinforce an identity. And using dude um, reinforces your identity. If I'm, I'm like you, we're of the same class. We're, I'm not above you. You're not above me. We're on the same level. OK, all right. OK, good. Yeah. Oh, I think you got it. Um, all right, so let's turn to what you all have in, in terms of what you found in your, your project. So your, what you were supposed to do for today was to just be mindful, have your ears up, ears out, ears listening, basically, basically you were eavesdropping on conversations that you overheard, or maybe that you participated in, where you heard people use the word dude. So you were supposed to record who was the person who said it, who did they say it to, um, what was the situation, right? Were they in walking down the street? Were they in the gym? Uh, and what was the whole context of the, you know, like what was the sentence that it was used in? So did anybody? not find any instances of people using dude. One, two, three, four, five. A little, you only found a few. Yeah, like on it wasn't dude, it was bruh. It was, it wasn't dude, it was bruh. Yeah. So it's like, I, was, I categorized it the same okay. way. All right, okay, so do you think that you're finding that dude maybe is disappearing from the lexicon? I see a strong yes and a strong no. I was gonna say that uh, I think a lot of other words are replacing the word dude, and not in the same way. It's like it's branching out. It's like that one word kind of encompassed the a lot of indexes and a lot of ideas of masculinity, but then all these other words branched out from it and kind of were more specific. Like bra, you wouldn't say bra to like a girl. I mean, you could. It's yeah, supposed it to be, be more garment. feminine, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, but it's also a term for like a friend, you know what I mean? Or like you'd be like, hey man, like what's up? You know, you say man instead of dude, you wouldn't say, hey dude, like just kind of sounds different. It's like the words are more specific now and it's, it's changing, it's developing, but it's, the words have the same idea. You guys are so smart. <laughs> I just love this class. Amanda, what are you gonna say? And then in the article I know he said like, in 2002, like it was fading away, like so, and then like she said, like there's gonna be like new like lexicon pretty much. And like what I found too, cause like I hang out with I guess more urban people 
And so, like, I guess that's a nice way to say it. Um, and it's just like the N word is being used as that now, but it's not only like in a like in a stereotypical racial way, but like there's like white people saying it, and it's like that's like the cooler way to say dude. Wow. So that's what I that's what I found. Now, so. do you think that anybody could use that word? I don't think any. I don't think. <laughs> Cause I'm uh, um, <laughs> like if I'm like walking down the street and I hear it and I'm like what? You gotta kind of check out. What yeah, you say. yeah, you know. But like if they're like sometimes, I don't know. Like if, cause I'll hear it sometimes and I know like they're they don't have that like negative connotation that it does have. It's like that new cool way of saying, That's right. dude. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, it's much more nuanced, mm -hmm. and it's like the person who speaks it is asserting a certain kind of masculinity or indexing a certain stance or, or status in society. It's become so much more nuanced and complex and not necessarily an ugly thing to say. Yeah. Unless it comes out of some the wrong person's mouth. Maybe. <laughs> yeah, but I feel like the people who say it now are like culturally hip and like I listen to hip hop and I have like, <laughs> I don't know, like that's the type of people that, so like that negative word, like I know we're talking about linguistic, that negative word is like transforming into something else. Based on culture. I just love you. <laughs> so smart. Thanks, Amanda. Yeah, Taylor. Um, they were they were talking about how it's usually used towards males, and even the author was talking about how it's usually women. Even though they'll use it, they won't. One of the conversations I heard was a female speaking to a male in the library, and she's like, "Dude, I'm not a dude," and like reinforce <laughs> that. All right. So look, what does the author say? There's three different ways that it's typically used when women use it in disgust, uh, but it's not just disgust, it's to, if they're saying dude to a guy like this, <coughs> it's to what, it's to create social distance. So, dude, you know, it's not like, oh dude, you know, it's like, <laughs> basically, you're an idiot, okay. It's what, so it's creating some kind of social distance. It's also used to commiserate. Dude, you would not believe, I, t I totally bit it on my bicycle. Actually, this is true, this morning I rode my bike to work in the snow, and I totally, dude, I totally bit it. I wrecked. And what's the other way? Do you remember? Camaraderie, to be like, oh, hey, hey, dude, how you doing? What else are you gonna say, too? Um, I was gonna say it was like the other form of that was dudette, and you hardly ever hear, like, that my dad won't use dudette. He doesn't call me that, he'll be like, dude. Like, Who uses dudette? Great. <laughs> wait, wait. Yeah, I don't. but you hear it? No, just I've said it to people. I don't really hear anyone say it ever. It's just I've said it to people recently. Okay. And what is their response? <laughs> kind of weird looks. <laughs> well, do you think that it does any of these indexing things? Kind of. I, I think. Like the way that you take dude or dude and like its use and like like the amount that it's used by people I think is from where you grow up. Like if you're in the inner city, you're gonna hear it more usually I think. I like what time you grew up in. Oh yeah. What, like if yeah. you grew up, if yeah. you were in school in like the late 90s, then you're not gonna have as much as if you were like. In a, another time. Yeah. Okay, all right, interesting. Aaron, um, I just noticed like whenever I did this that out of the 20, 15 was used by females. So like the majority of mine was used by girls. And out of that 15, it was, it was only four, but um, it was a female to a male. And it wasn't, they weren't saying it upset, they were using it like in the same context. Like, hey dude, did you know, like, it was like equal. They weren't, it wasn't any like tension or anything like that. Okay. so it was. Maybe they were friends, and so she was indicating this sort of like solidarity, yeah. a camaraderie. Oh, interesting. Yeah, Elizabeth. I only got two, and the one of mine that was a girl that said it was definitely disgust. Like she was definitely like trying to put social distance, I guess. Um, Can you tell us what she said? She was just like, dude, seriously, stop. Um, <laughs> like, we were at a party, and she was trying to get him away from her, oh, basically. Oh, so she said that to a guy yeah, she at a party. Was... Okay, so creating social distance? Yeah, okay. 
So what was the other one that, that you had? Um, the other one was my dad being sarcastic about some guy in the mall. He was like, he's a cool dude. I'm like... Uh-huh, uh-huh, okay. <laughs> All right. Who else? Did anybody else have... Who had, like, a lot... Who heard, like, over 20 different ones? Okay. And would you say, in general, it was mostly guys or mostly girls? If it's mostly guys, raise your hand. Mostly girls, raise your hand. Okay. And is it like mostly white guys who say it? Right? Like it's some, it's like white guy lingo. <laughs> you know, I mean, I'm not, I don't think I'm not like being like oh. It's just like you know we have all these different categories of people and everybody you know we live in a a multicultural world and all different kinds of people with everybody has a, an identity. And so this is interesting in that how this creates, you know, this word use is indexing a particular type of masculinity. And there's going to be all different types of masculinities according to social class or ethnicity or nationality. It gets at that social constructed nature of, of masculinity. And it kind of speaks to what Amanda was talking about, like how it changes, how you have different words for different groups. Different, different people use different words to mean kind of similar things. So can I hear from you some instances of what you found? I found that most of them, like I went to the gym, so I was just eavesdropping while I was there. and. Um, a lot of like guys use do to like kind of like make friendship with strangers like if they need something cuz like one was just like dude are you almost done on with your reps and stuff so i think it's just like a gateway word okay. kind of a gateway <laughs> to make a word. relationship to make a relationship yeah. <laughs> and but also to do what oh yeah to like make a heterosexual like relationship like it's not like you're you're not creeping on Yeah. Them. Yeah. OK. They just want to be his friend. So. They just are like, hey, dude, can I use this? Yeah. OK, so it's like camaraderie. But it is that essence of masculinity that has solidarity. It's this cool solidarity. There's some sort of friendship, but there's also like not too close. Yeah. yeah. OK. Other instances. Cassandra, did, did you find anybody say dude? Well, yeah, because I worked at Bath and Body Works over the weekend. and. There was this one guy um, was just like, hey, dude, thanks, when I handed him his bag and just walked out. What do you think he was trying to say? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> how did you feel when, besides, pretend you're not doing this project, how did you feel when he said that? I didn't mind because yeah. it happens. Yeah, and it's friendly. Yeah. But He's do you think cute. some women are like, oh, do not call me, dude. I've never said dude to a girl unless she used it to describe herself or someone else first. Why would you never say it to a girl? I just figured it'd be disrespectful or um, rude. Okay, all right. Taylor, here to your right. I was just going to say in her example, it's really funny because Bath and Body Works is such a feminine yeah. store <laughs> that he's like asserting this masculine, like he had to insert dude in yeah. such... In, in a store that's super feminine. What insight! <laughs> yeah, do you think that's what was going on? Yeah, because um, we only really get guys that come in our store right before a holiday, a birthday. <laughs> they messed up and they did something and they need, <laughs> they need to make up, so okay, we only really... and so they conceive of relationships as, you know, let's buy a present and that'll make yeah. Let's buy a blender and everything will be great. Yeah, something. <laughs> That's so funny. And the opposite of mine of like the female to the male, for I had a boyfriend and a girlfriend talking, and kind of like how you can use dude and bro, he got really offended when she called him dude. He's like, I'm not your dude, like I'm your boyfriend. Like, oh, okay, so it was too the, much. The relationship kind of idea, yeah. Uh, okay, all right. Patrice? Did you find anybody use dude? I did actually found a few more females than males use it, but it was like in the connotation we were talking about, like for like being like upset about something or like surprised. Okay. Yeah. All right. So can you say what happened? 
Um, like one of them was like, where is it at? She said, dude, I love those shoes type of okay. deal. Dude, what are you talking about? Okay. Like, yeah. So building camaraderie, friendship. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. Kelsey, did you have any? Um, one of the ones with like a female was yelling at other drivers in the car. Like, so I don't, I know it mentioned like in the article about like, I don't know if it falls under social distance, but like confrontation, like dude, seriously. Like, what do you guys think? Um, Social distance? Probably, yeah. Okay, good. Yeah, Erin. Um, my one was actually between me and my best friend, and she skis, and she's really good at skiing. So she was showing me like a video of her on the mountain, but there's like a couple different, couple different people, and she did this trick. And I thought it was a guy, and I was like. Oh my gosh, was that you? I was like, I thought that was a dude. And she took that as a compliment and she's like, Yeah, like she was so happy that like I thought she was a guy like out on the slopes. Oh wow. So she's well how would you interpret that? In terms of this masculinity indexicality? Um Well, I mean she's kinda manly, so she <laughs> she was probably like maybe towards like masculinity. Like okay. she was to like even the playing field because she's like the only girl in her team, her skiing team. Oh, okay. So she hates being like pointed out like as the girl, so she always tucks her hair in and like makes sure that they don't really see her as a girl. All right, so she's indexing a certain kind of belonging in this group. Yeah, through her language. Alexa. Some girls like want to make sure like we don't all watch the notebook. So like what is we'll, that? Like it's a really sappy <laughs> movie. Okay. <laughs> so like we just well we will use dude like if we don't want to come off as like this really girly girl so we like take compliments if someone's like oh i thought that was a dude they're like yeah finally i'm not just a girly girl that's going to cry about everything okay so, we take All right. so redefining femininity also in a sense redefining woman so i heard two cops talking and one was two like, cops yes okay. so one was like so i asked dude how much you had drink tonight and the guy said back more than your mom <laughs> <laughs> So the police officer <laughs> said, so I, I asked the dude, the dude how, how much he had to drink tonight. Yeah. And so was he, what is he trying to do there, do you think? Like, make him like seem, like, it's like he was like creating distance between the two. Not, he was more like referencing like a guy, like the gender roles, I guess. Uh -huh. Like make, so that the other cop knew he was talking to another male. Okay, all right, so it was maybe also for the listener, his coworker, and maybe he did or didn't say dude there in the conversation, but in reporting it to his coworker, he said that he said dude. Yes. And so creating that social distance, that's really insightful. That's interesting. Um, that kind of also ties into our, our article and the part that said about um, dudes are people who are like a group of drug users or like skaters and like this kind of concept like it was indexing a, a specific group mm -hmm, a very mm -hmm. specific group of like rebels almost yeah yeah part of this also is is a lack of conformity right that you're not mm -hmm. too mm, obedient to the laws that you have your own agency and you don't stick too closely to the rules Olivia um, going back to the article and also the socially constructed part of the masculinity, I think, like in the article it says how it's shifted from group to group in, like, in history, but, like, even in current times you can see it shifting from, like, you know, little kids saying it all the time to, like, the drug users or, you know, surfers, and so I think it's very, the masculinity part of it is very socially constructed because it shifts from all these different Absolutely. Groups. Absolutely. Over time. I think you're exactly right. That language is that gets to that practice, right? Remember how we talked about at the beginning of the course, we talked about practice and how important practice is in that we're always creating identities for ourselves. And so it's through the, the use of like redefining when you use that, redefining like Amanda would say, you know, when you use a word that I would be reluctant to use because I wouldn't want somebody to misunderstand my intent. So 
this is how we create new identity through our words, that the world is not stuck. You can change the world. And one way that this happens is through language. Um, does anybody else want to talk about what they saw in, t in their uh, surveys? Uh, I have to say, a lot of the times, I think I was looking specifically for certain places where I knew someone might say dude. Um, for example, I was at the library and I saw this guy sitting there and he looked over and saw a friend and like smiled and I was like, oh, gonna listen in because you know, I know he's gonna say it. But he didn't, like he came over and just shook his hand and was like all proper about it and I was like, that's really weird, like I'm just not used to that. But he, their conversation kind of made it seem like they were friends but it was more serious. And I thought about in the article how he talks about people who don't want to be taken very seriously kind of use the word dude. And I thought about how, um, like they were talking about uh, a scholarship that the one guy was applying for and like what he was gonna do after college. So I figured, you know, he's probably far along in his education and so maybe he's kind of grown out of that stage. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And um, in another instance, at PT in the mornings, the guys are So usually, what is PT? PT is physical training, um, physical fitness for ROTC. Um, so in the morning, the, there's always like this corner of girls that like sit together and then guys that sit everywhere else. And so, like, I was just sitting there, but I was li listening into the other conversations because the girls were being quiet. But all I could hear was, like, hey, man, or, like, they, like no one would say dude. And I was just really, I, I thought about it, and I was like, I don't understand why I'm not hearing it because I would think that, you know, this group of males would say something about that. And I, I don't know, like, why it was that way, but I thought maybe you would maybe have some insight into that. I, I'm not well, sure. Well, I think what's going on, well, maybe Andrew wants to speak to the answer to that. I to build off what was said earlier and what you just said right now, I think a lot of people are replacing it with other words like man, bro, stuff like that. Because what I found is that the people who did say dude said it a lot. Like they didn't say man, they didn't say bro, they used dude, 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 dude. And like most of my stuff came from two people. Uh-huh, uh-huh, yeah. So I think that we can get at this idea of practice and how language is, is shifting. And there's also trends in language, you know, people aren't gonna say, hip, you know, they said it in the 50s, and then they said it in, I don't know when, then, I don't know, do people say hip anymore? No. no. Maybe, Maybe <laughs> my parents said hip in the 50s, and then it became cool again, so probably, like, your kids will say hip. Say it's a, it. You say it? <laughs> That's totally hip. <laughs> hip <on the> square. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I think all of this speaks to the, the evolving nature of language and how language changes through practice and how identity is also constantly shifting because it's always socially constructed. So that's all I wanted to say about that. Do you have any other comments or questions? Did anybody want to say something or? Okay, all right. Well, I'm gonna let you go for today and come back on Thursday and we're, we might, we might do a survey that requires going out of doors, and that we will. And if you have your homework, please turn it in here. If you had a, the case where you didn't have anybody say dude, write on a piece of paper with your name on it, I didn't have anybody say dude, so that I don't think, oh, well, they just didn't do it. So I can give you credit for it. I have friends who say they went just bring them up here. You can just put them on the table as you go. Oh. And I'll see you all on Thursday.